Hey, Carl. Hey, Amy. Thank you so much. I just got your uh, Christmas card that you sent. That's very sweet of you. It's got a fun little sugar cookie recipe in there, and that's amazing. You two are awesome. I really appreciate it. Merry Christmas to the both of you. Happy holidays, and yeah, we'll talk soon. Thanks again. Bye. Oh, 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 Hi everyone and welcome to the Geomologist Presents. That was a thank you message from Joe Richter. My wife Amy gets really into Christmas and she sent some of our friends a card or two, people that she probably plays with or has called into their show or whatever. So that was pretty cool that she did that and you're welcome Joe. Um, I hope you make use of that recipe and send me cookies. That'd be kind of cool. So in this uh, episode um, we're going to have a couple unboxings and then a recap of our Twilight 2000 session. Uh, Jason Connerly called in as well, and I will respond to his message. But uh, again, thank you, Joe, for those kind words, and uh, happy holidays, everyone. It's getting close. I'm very excited about a product I received, so I will do an unboxing. And it is it is a box, actually. So it's um, kind of USPS media mailbox that sort of uh, be like it's eight by twelve by like four or five inches. Is that right? Maybe six inches. So um, yeah, it's from Studio Two Publishing. DBA Mongoose Publishing, so I guess they're the distributor on the U.S. side of things for Mongoose. So I have an idea what this is, but I'm, like I said, I'm pretty excited about it. Now, Anvil, what is wrong with, there it goes. I found Anvil, um, so uh, Anvil will help me open the box. All right, no packing penis, which is good. I have cats and dogs. Packing penis are bad for animals. I guess they taste like corn. Um, there's bubble wrap, and there's a book inside a bubble wrap. I think it's one of the books that I ordered. It's a USPS container inside, and it is indeed the... Solomani front book for Traveler, the Mongoose Traveler edition. So I definitely a lot. It's in shrink wrap, which is interesting. I definitely like the cover. It's like three uh, humans, and with a background of ships being launched into space and uh, ships flying in the background. It's pretty cool. So I will open this up. Be careful not to damage it. The shrink. Open the shrink wrap up. Careful not to damage the book, right? And I really enjoy the production value that Mongoose is bringing to the new to Traveler. I think the only art I disagree with is probably for battle dress. I like the old. Um, there's these products, well, the old like Mega Traveler style. There's these products um, called Digest Group Publications. And I believe the the artist was Blair Reynolds, I want to say, who also did work, um, if you look back, for Pagan Publishing. I think it's Pagan Publishing. He did some Call of Cthulhu stuff. <clears throat> anyway, so uh, I like the way he made Battle Dress look. It looked very uh, angular, marine-like. I don't know. The new Battle Dress stuff looks too soft for me. Um, not hard military sci-fi lines. Anyway, so what we got in here... We have a sector map. That's something that's in the opening flap. And uh, this is a sector map of Solomani, Solomani Rim Sector. So that's where you would find uh, Earth right, in this sector. And I love these. 
I love what they've done with the maps, <clears throat> the sector maps. There is, they're really big for one. Oh, and on the back, it has Alpha Crucis uh, sector. So two sectors in this book, which is great. I think when I was collecting Mega Traveler, I would always look for products that had sector maps in them um, to get the quote unquote collection. I think I actually had like a, like there was an eight by 10 that came in the box set, like eight by 10 overview of the Imperium. And I would like fill in, you know, with shade in with pencil, um, the sectors that I had. And, uh, you know, there's some, like some products were not so quite canon. They're apocrypha, some of the Judges Guild stuff, but uh, this map's impressive. I think what is very cool is that it has on the bottom these maps. <clears throat> it has, you know, as long as, as, as well as the I, IISS logo, which is a survey, uh, Imperial Survey um, group riding their big dinosaur y thing, um, eight legged dinosaur thing. And then they have like where in the Imperium the Solomani Rim sector is located, uh, a little hex map um, key for what all the symbols mean. And then they have like on the right panel another key like with all the sectors um, and their political affiliations kind of in like big overview and um, all the different keys for the world characteristics and bases and all that kind of stuff. So, so it's kind of, it's very neat um, how they've done this. And I'm excited about seeing Alpha Crucis as well, um, which is very nice. It's, I think it's a sector that is, Solomon Rim has been shown and published before, but Crucis, I think, is less so. So, so that is a sector to, um, to trailing of the Solomani Rim, I believe. Let me make sure on that. Is that yeah, so that, yeah, that is, is to trailing of the, assuming that the Milky Way goes sort of clockwise, it is to trailing um, of, um, of the Solomani Rim, which is cool. So yeah, the map is very nice. I'm very excited about this. And the book itself, it racks in, and it's it racks in around 312 pages. Uh, the last several being an index, which is important. Um, I do like. All right, so the first, so in the table of contents, you have the intro, the overview of the Solomani Front. And they talk about imperial ter territory, confederation territory. This is like nominally 1105 uh, imperial year, third imperium year. Um, so about 100 years after the Soleimani Rim War um, or so. So the, and then I have shipped to the Soleimani Front, and then talk about the, the Vegan Autonomous District. Sometimes I pronounce it vegan, I don't know why. Um, they're an, an alien um, uh, entity, or a, alien polity. Um, the aliens look very interesting. Um, and then corporate bodies and non-state organizations, and then it has gazetteers of the Soleimani Rim and the Alpha Crucia sector. And then it has like a section um, on adventures in the Salamani front. So the layout is very nice. The intro is like a page long. Um, talks about humanity and the, the and Terrans versus Villani. Um, there's other different subspecies. I think they have uh, Selenites. Um, they, so they also have Aquamorph humans, so you could play genetically altered humans, uh, non-humans as well, in the polity, in the area, Oslan, uh, which are the cat-like, but not cat-like. I also don't like the way they drew Oslan, actually, in the new in the new version. I, again, prefer the old Mega Traveler stylings of how they made they made Oslan's look. Um, <clears throat> they, in this one, they, the Oslan's definitely look more like lions, um, in the other one, they looked cat-like, but more alien, in my opinion. Um, they have kept the ships and the aesthetics for the Oslan ships the same, but but not the Oslan themselves. So Droin, um, uh, which are kind of uh, lizard-like flying creatures, um, but small, more like, I would say more like bird-like, actually. Bird lizards, um, not quite chickens. Hivers, which are very strange. Um, they're starfish-like creatures um, with hive mind. Then Varger, which are uplifted dogs. Kakri, which are um, 
sentient herbivores that are very militant. They look, they're called centaurs, uh, but they kind of they're very, um, I would say, cow or deer like with uh, huge bodies and big legs. Jordani, which are the uh, species of human, which are uh, psionic, and then uh, vegans or vegans, um, which are a strange, strange looking race. A lot of minor races and uplifts. So they talk about uplifts, which is very cool. So you can have an ape uh, uplift traveler. And um, I guess I was curious to see if they could actually speak um, or what they would do for speaking or if they just have sign language. Um, so uh, it would be very interesting and challenging to play an uplift since the Soleimani has this... Um, at, it has written in the past the Soleimani are very specious. So... Um, compared to the Imperium, but that could be Imperial propaganda. Your traveler may vary, right? So, um, but it does say that apes living in the Imperium are just treated as another exotic race. Apes in the Soleimani Rim um, are used as laborers, ape, ape up uplifts. Then they also have uh, dolphins. They so could be a dolphin uplift. That would be um, very challenging to play too. Uh, they do have rules for dolphin travelers in Behind the Claw, actually, not in this book. So you have to go to another book. Um, and then they also have Gurungans, which are squid-like creatures, and you can have characters for them. And then we then, which look like rocks. But uh, you can also... They're not suitable for travelers, though, but they just talk about them. And they also have these creatures called ladybugs that are minor and race and native to Alpha Crucis, so... So all other options besides playing humans, then they talk about imperial territory and they have like a political map. Um, the Archduke, is, so the in this incarnation of Traveler, <clears throat> Soleimani Rim is occupied by the Imperium, or sorry, uh, most of the Soleimani Rim is occupied by the Imperium. So Sol is occupied territory. Um, imper there's imperial military rule. There's an Archduke of Sol. Um, so the Navy has very, is, has a strong presence compared with, uh, Alpha Crucis, which is kind of 50, 50. And that's kind of where, uh, is that right? Yeah. Alpha Crucis, which is mostly Soleimani Confederation. I think that's kind of cool that they did that. So you have Soleimani Rim, which is, I would say, uh, 75%, um, Imperial, whereas Alpha Crucis is like, um, almost 80%, it looks like, if not 90%, uh, Soleimani, which is kind of neat. And they talk about uh, conflicts as well. So that's very cool. They talk about Solsec, which is the Soleimani security and Soleimani navy. Um, these are all kind of essays, not a lot of, kind of more, I mean, m more essay, less, um, less mechanics at, in this stage. And they have like a really cool astrographic and political factor map, which could show where conflicts could arise. Um, and then the different party factions. It's quite a few party factions. Um, then they have ships of the Soleimani front, which is where you get into sort of the mechanics and the different types of ships. They've kept the aesthetic of the ships, the way the Soleimani kind of look, um, as compared to what the Imperial ships look like. So there is a distinction, um, <clears throat> which is kind of neat. So there's a lot of information on this here. Um, everything from fighters to carriers, it looks like. And uh, big big ships. They have the maps for the ships. I don't know if one would ever use those. Um, who knows? And they have a whole section on the uh, the vegan, vegan <laughs> autonomous district. Um, they're native race, relative, alien race native to Mwangui subsector in uh, the Vega subsector in the Soleimani Rim sector. <clears throat> so um, they're very interesting looking. I wonder if there's a picture of them I can try to describe. So, right, they look, they look, uh, they have like tentacles for hands. They have one singular eye um, and you can actually play one. They have the rules for how to play one and then how to, how to career as uh, a, a vegan, which is pretty interesting. So you could 
the different queries that you could have. It'd be kind of challenging and fun to do that. And they have the whole the whole life path for uh, trying to play a, a day again. They have ships for them as well. So now they have the next section is corporate bodies and non-state organizations. So and then they have ships and stuff for those types of play, things as well. So you have like it looks like there's conflict and political movements that are part of this. Um, so very cool. Then they, then there's the gazetteers. Is so page, looks like from page 107 on, it's a gazetteers of the um, of the two sectors, and they go by subsector. Um, kind of if you've seen Mongoose Traveler books, they kind of do that. They have the history of the sector in the front, um, and the timeline of the sector, and then they talk about in detail um, the world the world codes. Um, and the basic structures for all the different worlds in there. And if there's anything interesting in that world, um, it looks like they have like a good column or so of each type of thing. And then if there's anything interesting mechanically, like um, ships or defense boats or species, they talk about that. Um, so I'm just kind of flipping through it. I'm not going to go in detail, but um, it looks pretty cool. There's all some fun, and that you in every single like section. Um, like they have like strange monsters that could live in these places as well. In every single section, they have like adventure hooks that could you, you could use to inspire, a, you know, um, play in that area. Um, some things are more detailed than others. It just depends. Like I'm looking here at the world Bellerophon, and it has like a whole page and uh, more than that. So there must be a lot of stuff going on in Bellerophon. Um, looks like an aquatic world. My cat's trying to come up and join us. Um, we'll see. So very nice presentation um, of the different worlds, and they do this not just for Solomani Rim, but also for Alpha Crucis uh, sector. So, so very cool. At least I'm pretty sure. Mm. Pretty sure they said that. In the, yeah, the uh, yeah. They have the the whole same thing set up for the Alpha Crucis sector. So, timeline, what's going on there? So, uh, yeah, very cool, very cool stuff. So, um, well worth the the purchase. I love Traveler lore. Um, there's an there you go is an overview of my new Traveler book, the Solomani Front. I'm never running the Solomani Front. Um, Shea Webster is planning to run something there. So I'm pretty excited about that, um, and we'll see where things go. Uh, there's another companion book almost to this that just came out called The Imperium, or The Third Imperium, which is going to give a history of The Third Imperium, and Core Sector, which has not, if I recall correctly, has really not been done before. They've done some subsectors in a challenge magazine here and there, but never really delved into, you know, 1105-era, Golden Age-era Traveler Core sector. So I'm pretty excited about that. But um, yeah, cool stuff. Hey, everyone. I'm doing another mandatory unboxing. Well, mandatory in the fact that Amy got me another Christmas present. So she said, well, I want you to do an unboxing on it. So I'm going to. So it is a, uh, it's kind of more of an envelope from a company called Discover Books. Um, so it's like a, it's kind of one of those cardboard paper envelopes, like the consistency of a, a bag that you would get at the store, that kind of material. I'm putting it away with Anvil. And it is a, indeed a book. Actually, it seems like it's two books. All right, a book and a pamphlet. Very interesting. All right, so here is the book. The book is Gettysburg, The First Day uh, by Harry W. Fonz. And, uh, yeah, very cool. It's, it looks very scholarly, but it talks about Gettysburg. I believe that Fonz has a series of books um i believe he has gettysburg the second day and a companion to that 
Culp's Hill and Cemetery Hill. And then the company also sent me from the editors of Civil War Times Illustrated, um, like almost a, like a primer on Gettysburg, right? So um, it's a, it looks pretty cool actually, the primer on Gettysburg. It might be the first thing to start, like an overview of it. So um, I guess I'm gonna learn about Gettysburg. To what end, I do not know yet, except maybe just historical pursuit and I enjoy that time period, um, Civil War um, and all that. So, so yeah, so I got a, I'm getting a collection of um, these kind of books. So the first day, Culp's Hill and Cemetery Ridge and probably I guess it has um, the second day as well which do not involve those two. So uh, the Henry Fonz, P-F-A-N-Z. Of collection. So last night I ran a session of my ongoing Twilight 2000 game, the fourth edition. I'm kind of basing it off the classic module starting from Breakout from the Battle of Kalitz, and now we're into um, Krakow, the free city of Krakow. And, um, yeah, I guess I, I probably shared with my wife that I was a little disappointed in the game, but it wasn't like I was disappointed in the players. I was just disappointed in what happened. But sometimes you got to go by the die rolls and you got to, you can't force the narrative. And, um, yeah, I, I guess I had wanted some violence to occur, but, uh, Players did a good job of quelling it or doing things to mitigate it. It was just kind of weird, strange things that happened. So they had been in Krakow, and then they um, decided to go back to the farm, pick up some gear, and uh, Amy's character, Kasha, wanted to make sure that the children were all right. They had learned from Cutler that the father was dead and the mother was probably being held captive by the... Uh, the Raiders of Warsaw, the Marauder group that Cutler had been a part of. If you recall last time, um, Sam had killed Cutler, or I guess executed Cutler, who was a bad dude who had organized uh, not just the raid on his farm, but this ambush on American special forces um, that had been carrying Operation Reset information. So uh, no one was sad that Cutler was killed or died or was executed. And then um, also in Krakow, Tops had received a message in the form of a coaster. And very coolly, my wife Amy had made a prop. So we found a coaster of a Polish, or a picture of a Polish beer. She put it on a coaster, did some little, um, you know, cricket stuff to put Nazrovi, ne and then, you know, daily specials, like around the edge of the coaster. And then on the back, uh, wrote out um, the message, which was what I had intended. And then I took a picture and posted it on as a handout. Um, but I have the actual prop, a physical thing, which is kind of neat. And I think the player's got a kick out of it. I shared it with uh, the person who plays Tops, who's a ex-seal, uh, um, Master Sergeant. And uh, he read the message and said, okay, I gotta stay here and crack out and have things to do. He let Grunts see. Um, Sergeant Grunts see the message and it said to meet at St. Florian, St. Francis's gate. He puts the the author, the Henry Halleck had put St. Francis, so the barkeep or an owner of Nezrovi had put St. Francis, but it's uh, St. Florian's gate. Uh, St. Francis, I guess, being the English name, maybe showing that he was legit and had American sympathies. Anyway, so Tops is going to meet there uh, the next day. Uh, the rest of the people, and they have like a hideout in a way that no one has yet bothered them with. And I wonder how long that's gonna be. I'm sure it'll now come to a head since uh, at the end of the adventure, well, it's now like a fortified location at the end of the session, that is. So the characters went back to, um, back towards their campsite at the farm outside of about a 10 kilometers outside of Krakow. Um, they saw some scavengers and traded food for scrap. Um, and they had no problems getting out of the checkpoint. 
they ran into Sam's friend, uh, Sergeant Dublinsky, and um, he said, yeah, come and see me, let me know, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> Anytime you come by here, be eat, no problem going through. Um, have you talked to Henry Halleck? Sam said, yeah, we talked to him, thank you so much uh, for the tip. He said, oh, yes, yes, we're not, you know, I guess, I would say the Polish are pro-American, but they're not necessarily anti-American. And the Ormo in Krakow seems to be the least corrupt and the most noble, if that makes sense. Very professional. Anyway, on the way back uh, to the farm, they run into a an Ormo patrol, a patrol of scouts. Uh, that's kind of what I rolled up, or we did random encounters. I actually had the players roll like a... The random encounter, the way it works, if you're in a sit, set location, you roll a D10 every day, and something can happen. And I they rolled, he rolled a number... And it indicated that there were scouts. So the scouts I decided were from the Ormo. Or we actually rolled randomly to see if they're Ormo or Marauders. If they had been Marauders, I'm sure they'd have been combat. But it turned out they were they were you know Polish Ormo from probably from Krakow. I decided from Krakow. The so players went and talked to them, and they said, "Oh, we see these Americans here camped at this farm. Are they gonna uh, do they have ill intent or good intent or what's going on?" And then the players said, "Well, we've met them and we've traveled with them. They're cool, and they're a m medical unit." Uh, and they're like, "Oh, okay, then they're probably not." you know, hostile, blah, blah, blah. So they go down to the farm and things, of course, have gotten interesting. So there were four patients who had typhoid that had been sort of out of it and Kasha had taken care of. And I rolled those all randomly, like who they were, what they were, officers, and what specialty or MOS they were. And it's kind of neat because it builds like a story when you kind of do that. And it seems like uh, they were all taken prisoners somehow, somewhere along the, after the Battle of Kalitz by the Soviets. But they're a part of the um, uh, 82nd Airborne Detachment. Some of them were, and some of them were combat engineers, artillery. Um, so, and interestingly, and I, ran, I, I kind of rolled the personalities of all of them. And unfortunately, the officer who had been who had, had typhoid, who happened to be like a lieutenant, and was you know in intel and part of the Rangers or attached to the Rangers, was not a nice person. And he kind of wanted since there was no leadership there other than, you know, Diaz and Ronson and a recovering, recuperating um, Sergeant Barrett, who is a, nur a, a medical nurse. Um, yeah, this guy, this guy, his name was Lieutenant uh, Cruz. He was not listening and wanted to take over. So there was a confrontation there, and I thought, I guess this is maybe my disappointment, I thought it would come to, um, come to gunfire with, you know, Ronson backing up the, the player characters on the 50 cal just in case. Um, but, uh, that never happened. Both, uh, the player who played Jonesy and then my wife who played Kasha kind of dressed him down, talked him down, got him to, you know, calm down, um, gave him some drugs because since Kasha has a medical bag, gave him some drugs, calm him down, uh, Benadryl and heart, uh, medication, uh, they said. And then, um, so there's like a group and then there was actually one ranger who was like, yeah, this guy's kind of off. I've never really, I thought he's very prone to violence. And that was like a, like a Sergeant Wilkins who kind of hit it up with grunts. Um, so, so there's one among the dissenters, but they had like commandeered some of the weapons that this group had accumulated. So I thought it would come to violence, but it did not. And then eventually, like Jonesy and Kasha talked these guys into getting another treatment of antibiotics since they had had typhoid. And uh, yeah, instead... Kasha gave him like a sedative. So it kind of knocked him out or made him very woozy. And then um, these, and they even talked one guy who was not part of the typhoid group, but also was sort of a prone to violent type of person. Um, talked one guy into getting the, getting a treatment, uh, which was kind of funny. I mean, it's just, you know, we roll, it's like a roll and opposed roll. And they rolled, the players rolled really well and the bad guys didn't roll so well. Um, and, um, yeah, that's kind of the way the dice go, right? If it had gone the, I mean, now there was one like kind of double one critical failure and that kind of made it so that they were going to continue to be hostile because Jonesy was trying to be like nice to them and charm them. And they said, uh, get away from us, you German spy, effectively. So, um, but uh, probably harsher than that when I said it in gameplay. So, um, yeah, so they diffuse the situation, knock these guys out, and then, very interestingly, there is. are we going to banish these four off the island from this group, or are we going to turn them over to the Polish scouts that are out there? 
So they took a vote. And I had, every, I had all the players voted. And then I had like random votes or just depending on the makeup and the motivation of the particular uh, NPCs, I either voted for them. So for example, Wilkins said to banish, um, but other and other said we're siding with the players, no turn them over. Um, right. I think um, so. So in the end, it was a close vote. I think it was like by two votes. And um, I had the players roll randomly to see how people voted. If I couldn't, if it wasn't very clear based on their motivation. And by two votes, they decided to turn them over to the Polish scouts. So they give the Polish scouts these guys that are drugged up. And then they decide, and this is all like early in the day. And they decide, and then the part of that discussion was like, well, we need to just get to Krakow. It's, it's dangerous out here. Let's get to somewhere more stable. Kasha has this idea that maybe we need, we create a boarding house or a, even a hospital because there's only like one hospital right now in Krakow. And that is for the people in the castle, <laughs> which, you know, the leaders, the civilian leadership of Krakow, um, at the, I think it's called the Wawel. So, um, there in the old city at the edge of the old city. So, um, yeah, so that's the goal that Kasha has is to do this and they have a location. So during this time also, they kind of uh, detached the 50 cal, uh, kind of covered up in canvas on the top. It was on a pintle mount. So Ronson moves to that. And then the, some of the others decide to paint a red cross on the side of the APC to go with the ambulance. So this medical convoy, and they convinced the Polish scout team that they were a medical group. So this medical convoy then rolls into Krakow and uh, they kind of get back to where they started, this sort of uh, old uh, set of apartment complex uh, with a central courtyard where they had uh, they had killed Cutler. Oh, they did dump the body somewhere in the city, by the way. They didn't leave it there. So they have the space and the, they can park the vehicles in it. And now it's going to be how to see Krakow government, the Ormo, the, the uh, Warda, um, the civilian government, the... Um, the the mob, the equivalent of the mob, uh, underworld in Krakow, and then the marauders deal with this. They do have one marauder prisoner um, whose jaw had been broken before during interrogation, and they they decided to hold on to him to turn over maybe to the civilian Polish civilian government, the Warda, and um, either root out KGB elements because this guy was a KGB plant or kind of give that information so that they would stop this idea or stop this. So the marauders, they learned, have maybe this plan in mind to kind of disrupt um, Krakow, cause problems in Krakow, disrupt and topple the civilian government. And Jonesy and Kasha uh, believe, rightly or wrongly, that it's probably the KGB up to their machinations there in the background to dis to destabilize the Krakow government and have their own cronies take over. So then it becomes like a kind of KGB Russian base. Um, so we didn't see what happened with tops. So that'll have to be at another time. I'm hoping I can get together with that player ahead of time and go over that. But if not, that's how the next session will start. So that is our Twilight 2000 game. And it's getting very interesting um, in on the streets of Krakow. Mr. GM Malajust, this is Kasia, Kasia Nanayobonensky. I want to tell you, you did a good recap, and I have lollipop for you. I had to take lollipops away from the ones in the barn that caused problem, but they did not lick them yet, so I am just redistributing. So I will give you the banana pop, because that one was sealed up, and it is a good pop with chocolate anyways have fun doing other recaps i have to get back to killing and not killing mostly not killing i guess i don't want to kill anymore eh, that's not true it's a good side hobby i don't know how that happened how did kasha get early access to my recap is she tapping in from another dimension in an alternate timeline through some sort of operation reset technology. It's very scary. I don't want to be injected in the behind without my knowledge with uh, what I think are antibiotics, but turns out to be a sedative. 
better be careful and sleep with one eye open. I think I'm going to let Jason take us out with his cool comment about a possible in the future barbecue tour or food tour of San Antonio. And for the record, I don't mean like a limousine fancy schmancy. I just mean any sort of conveyance because after two, maybe even one place we go to, we're going to be in a food coma and need uh, some can, something to drive us around. So, um, so thank you for that comment, Jason. Thank you for that comment, Joe. Thank you for all my listeners. And TJ Drennan will come on with his master riffs after the show. And today's cover art is the cover of the Free City of Krakow module supplement for Toilet 2000. And the artist is Steve Venter. So uh, thank you for that. Steve, wherever you are, I don't know you personally, but you get some, you have some great art for these covers. So um, anyway, um, all right, now here's Jason. Hey, Carl, Jason here. Yeah, I, I don't know, hiring a limo to drive us around to different restaurants wasn't <laughs> exactly my, my thought. That's a little out of my budget, and my idea was going to hole-in-the-wall places with great food and, and enjoying them. And... and me needing on a <laughs> regular guy's budget. Um, but either way, a food tour of San Antonio is a, definitely on my to-do list for vacations, uh, probably in 2023. We'll see. But we'll feel that out as we go. So, But anyhow, as always, great hearing your show, and I'll look forward to talking to you soon.